morning. morning. Welcome to service. It's great to be gathered with you in Christ's name this day. We have a, just a few announcements for the care of the congregation. Uh, we have uh, just coming up, just if you would like a poinsettia, please come and take one after the service. There's some bags that are over there to help keep it nice and warm when we're outside, but please grab one if you'd like one. Uh, also, just uh, following the service, we do have our, our council meeting, and we'll be moving over to the education room for that. We were going to meet in the youth room, but the, the fifth and sixth graders allowed us to share in that room, so uh, we'll have a nice table to work at. So, uh, coming up, we do have our annual meeting coming up on uh, January 28th, and so just keep that in mind and keep continued prayers as we continue to look forward to this next year. Uh, just a couple other things that are coming up. Uh, Lent is, uh, today is January 14th. Uh, Ash Wednesday is February 14th. So uh, we're just a little bit of bug month out from our Ash Wednesday service. Uh, the women of the church are going to be meeting right after the service. They usually take the first uh, meal that is served with uh, the Wednesday night services. So they're going to be doing some planning. Uh, with that after the service, uh, but if you are interested in helping provide a meal uh, for one of the nights during uh, the Wednesdays of Lent, uh, please uh, fill it in the calendar downstairs. Uh, it can be used to put down if you want to help and bring treats on Sundays, but if you also want to sign up for one of these dinners on Wednesday nights, please do so. At this time, I invite you to please stand as you're able. As we begin our service with the brief order of confession and forgiveness of sins, found on page 116. We gather this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow to the fullness of of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us not confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. So I call our name, Minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our gathering song, which is, Will You Come and Follow Me? Hymn 798. <laughs>
period. Our period is found on page 184. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you.
which is found printed in our bulletin printer. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for your countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, tracing you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our readings. How 
great this assembly is. If I were to count them, they would be more numbered than the sand. And to count them all, my flesh man would need to be like yours. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and another. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall become one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I should please stand as you're able as we see together the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Was 
Eli was the priest, and the little boy's name was Samuel. Samuel, and you, do you know who Samuel would actually grow up to be? Have you ever heard of King David? King David? David and Goliath? So David and Goliath, uh, Samuel was actually the prophet that actually blessed David before he went out and faced Goliath. He actually blessed him to be one who would actually come, uh, actually ahead of King Saul at the time. Just slide that to the side. But here we have Samuel. And was Samuel old? What was man Samuel? He was a wasn't even a teenager, he was just a little boy. And you know what happens? Uh, is we don't we don't get it. We get into Samuel chapter three, right? Samuel chapter one and two talking about Eli and his sons. It talked about the temple. It talked about Hannah, his mother, who couldn't have any kids until finally she had Samuel. And she actually dedicated Samuel uh, to be somebody who she actually gave up. Uh, to be with the, at the temple all the time. The Samuel was there to help and be present. And so one of the things that happened within this is that Samuel continued to be somebody who helped out around the church all the time. He opened the doors, he did all these different things that were going on, and here, one of the things, he worked with Eli, who was one of the priests at the time. Now, we had this dream where he fell asleep Three times, right? And each time he heard uh, somebody calling his name, and he thought it was who? He thought it was Eli, but was it Eli? Yeah. Who was it? Yeah. Well, it was yeah, God. Yeah, God had been calling to calling to him, and he had been calling him by name. And he said, trying to get his attention, because then he kind of woke you up and said, "You're here. Wake up." Have you ever had that happen? Yeah, and he sits there. Oh, okay. Or somebody talks to you and you try to figure it out. Well, Samuel thought that it was Eli who was talking to him, but it was God. God was talking to uh, Samuel, and he was actually giving Samuel the very first task that he was supposed to do. As a, not just a little kid or a boy, not a priest, but a prophet. He was supposed to go to Eli, the person he was actually talking with and had grown up working with. And actually tell him some very, very, very bad news. Yeah, how would you like to do that? Your very first job is to tell somebody some bad news. And Eli in the beginning was just like, okay, tell me what the God, God has said. Don't hold anything back. And so Samuel was willing to share what was there. We understand that there's many different ways that people serve within the life of the church. And Samuel's job was to be not a priest, but a prophet, as even a little tiny boy who would grow up and continue to share things. And we continue to understand how God continues to use us in those ways. To be able to share, and that sometimes scare uh, people uh, because of how powerful God's word is. That God actually reminds us of who we are. That we actually are sinners, but at the same time, he also reminds us that on account of what he's done in Christ, that he's forgiven you. He's forgiven me. What a joy, because that's taken the work and placed on a Savior, somebody who is coming. And this is something that we continue to do. Whatever jobs that we fill, whatever roles that we play within the church and outside the church, we understand that we need to be listening and hear when God calls us. And be bold and brave and be able to say the words that sometimes might be scary. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you continue to remind us of the promises that you give. You remind us that your call is from the youngest to the oldest. You remind us that you continue to actually have somebody speak and we hear. May we continue to actually send out us with your words of promise, and at those times, the words that actually bring us to repentance. May we hear those words and trust that you 
have saved we be and call us your children through Jesus. Amen. Thank you for coming up today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are continuing to be in the season after Epiphany, and that's one of those times where we hear and we have that revelation of who God is, who the God who is invisible has become word made flesh and dwelt among us. And continue to be the one who gathers, calls, and claims us. He surprises us when we least expect it. And continues to be the one who shows us exactly who we are. Looking at the readings that we have for today, our gospel is one that continues to share with us a step where we moved from John a couple of weeks ago confessing that I'm not a prophet. I am not the one who is the Messiah. I am just John who baptizes and calls for the repentance. And I prepare the way. We hear this after uh, the next day where he's actually pointed out to first Andrew to say this. Th this is the one. This is the lamb who will take away the sins of the world. And Andrew follows. So our gospel for today is one of a call again, a call of Philip, a call of those who need to hear, a call of Nathaniel that comes by sharing and saying, you got to hear this. you got to see this. See, one of the things that we do in the midst of trying to figure out who God is, is we like to continue to work. And to share what it takes in order for us to prove just how righteous we are. So at times we continue to build these ladders that we establish. We continue to have the way that we think that if we just do all these things right, that will prove just how righteous we are. The Apostle Paul, Martin Luther, and all and other theologians continue to remind us that we know what we should do and we don't do it. And the very thing that we don't want to do, we do. We get stuck in this in the midst of trying to get up to where God is. We have this ladder that we try to keep climbing so we can get closer and closer to where God is. That isn't what we have in our gospel this day. What we have in our gospel this day is the time and place when God does something that we least expect it to do. That God does something that we could never imagine before. It shakes us. It wakes us up. God coming down. The word becoming flesh and dwelling amongst us. This ladder is something that we are very familiar with. When we think about the Old Testament, Many of us have thought about uh, when, um, when God has given his word to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. After Jacob has just been, uh, kind of found his way to steal the birthrights away from Esau. When he's found his way to actually get the blessing from Isaac. We hear that the very first thing that Jacob does is he runs. He runs out into the wilderness and he's there, and what do you do when you're there at night while you sleep? And as he's sleeping, he has this dream, and in this dream he understands that there's like this ladder from heaven down to where he's at. And there's angels ascending and descending on this ladder as they're coming down to where he's at. And he says, this place is holy, for God is here. And in that time and place, God continues to give Jacob a promise. That I will settle you in a place, in fact, in this place, wherever I am, this is a dwelling place. 
The second, third, second thing was that he promised that there would be a savior from the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that would be the one who is promised to come and save and redeem. The third thing was he promised that he would be with him always. That God comes in and God is present with us when we least expect it. For Philip and Nathaniel, Philip is one who, he doesn't find Jesus. Jesus found Philip. Jesus found Philip, he comes up to him and says these words, two words that tickle his ears, you can follow me. Wow, who is that? Who are you to say these things? And what are you doing? And what am I following? And what am I going to do? You need to give me everything I need to know. But he simply says, come and follow. Well, what do you do with that? Well, of course you go out and you find somebody else to share this with. And so Philip then goes out and finds Nathaniel and calls Nathaniel and says, guess what I just found? I found the one who's been talked about in the prophets that Moses also wrote about. Guess who he is? He's Jesus. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathaniel's words are words that we continue to struggle with because we have a hard time with the understanding that God would show up in weird places like Hugh Frank or Montgomery or Lee Center. What in the world would God do showing up here? Can anything come out of Nazareth? Can anything come out of Montgomery? Philip says these words, and the words that we're trying to figure out how to actually be those who are sharing and doing evangelism. Philip is one of the role models for us because he doesn't say, okay, here's what you need to do. He says simply, come, see, come and see, come and see what God is doing. And so as they continue to go on, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him because Philip was bringing him to him. And as he was coming, Jesus says to him, ha, here is truly an Israelite within whom there is no deceit. There's an Israelite with whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel said, well, where in the heck did you get to know me from? Where did you get to know me from? I don't know who you are. Jesus' words are words that continue to shape. And I think the could have been shook a little bit more because Jesus says, well, I saw you under the fig tree even before Philip called you. And he goes, no way. How did you do that? And with this, we have that power that we start confessing, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. One who said, can anything come out of Nazareth? What happened if Jesus would have said to Nathaniel, I knew you when you were in the womb. How God continues to speak and claim us and know us where we're at. This ladder that continues to come down and share with us where God is revealing himself to us right now. He gives these words to, the, to Nathaniel that heavens will be opened up. You'll see the, the angels of God coming down, ascending and descending upon the Son of, on the Son of Man. Coming down on the Son of Man and going up on the Son of Man. Nathaniel wasn't there for Jesus' baptism. Nathaniel wasn't there when the transfiguration happens. So what in the world would he see this? Well, in fact, he saw it that day with the very ladder of God standing right in front as Jesus was the one in whom the connection from heaven to earth was built. Mark Luther, in his understanding of this section of the gospel, continued to talk about when we see heaven open with our eyes as Christian faith. We see it when we're baptized. 
And we see heaven opens whenever we hear the word of God. Whenever we partake in Holy Communion. Whenever we receive the absolution for our sins. When we do this, Luther says, heaven itself is literally opened up. The kingdom of God has come down to us. And we ourselves hear the voice of our Heavenly Father. And we see with our eyes of faith the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This ladder is here. It continues to be where we gather in Christ's name, where two or three are gathered within the life of this congregation here at St. John. It continues to be broken into when we hear and receive the promises in communion, baptism, and absolution. It is here. Have you seen it? Because if you haven't seen it, it takes those eyes of faith to know that just because we haven't seen doesn't mean it isn't here. Christ has come down. And Christ promises to go with us outside of these doors as we seek out those who are lost, those who are broken, those who are using words of where in the world can God be present. And we are the ones who get to use this word. We are the ones who get to continue to reveal this ladder of Christ connecting heaven to earth. And saying, God is here. In this day, as we continue to trust, in the midst of us doubting, Christ has come. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of this day. Our hymn of this day is, Word of God, Come Down to Earth, Hymn 510.
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and be glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now continue with the prayers of the people. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form as holy God and holy man, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Delight in the goodness of your creation, Heavenly Father, as you continue to be with those healing the areas of the world harmed by greed, restoring those areas recovering from natural disasters, we especially lift up people from Florida and the South who were affected by the tornadoes that went through this past week. Continue to surround them with care. Continue to provide them shelter and food. Protect our forests and our waterways. Continue to be with those who tend our livestock. Be with the farmers and ranchers as they tend and care for those animals in their care. Watch over them and protect them as they do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully. God of wisdom, give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to actions that promote equitable partnerships and uplift those who are on the margins. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, O oh God of compassion. You know our inner hearts. Be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism, those who are struggle with their health. We lift up to you, Chris Reed, Renee Brown, Sharon Collington, Bill Gibbs, Shirley Engstrom, Katie Iverson, Paul Sordersky, Holly Fayetto, Kathy Welton, Dave Wingy, Lynn Denser, Rick Hansen, Darlene Hopper, Kathy Janowski, Gloria Kelly, Peggy Zamoda, Hillary Birdsell, Doris Anderson, Berlin Pai, Lisa Krocek, Cindy Krasinski, Dennis Scrubhammer, Joe Myers, Joyce Denser, Pat Krieger, Eric Kingstrom, Zeke Zarabka, Matthew Mullen, Harvey Chapman, Preston Pollington, Michael Pollington, Aubrey Rover, Cindy Leibach, Jean Wong, Milo Kaminsky, Lloyd Zamoda, Adlin Tini, Terry Nish, Ken Meyer, Diane Levine Schultz, Tom Trenda, Amy Cortis, Yvonne Cortis, and Joy Cortis, and all those that we lift up to you now, either silently or loud. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those who serve our country, especially those from our congregation, be with Noel Bachman, Brett Hearn, Lane Chapman, Jack Chapman, Travis Ferguson, Cassie Gilbertson, Dave, David Bartlis, Ashley Noisky, Michael Schock, Alex Schock, Brandon Van Hout, and Sam Westerhouse. Be with them and their families as they serve. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you the police officers, the county deputies that serve our community. Continue to be with them, the fire departments and the paramedics as they continue to care, care and tend to those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel. So inspired and empowered to do your work in this world. God of unity, make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care for one another. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Trusting God who raised Christ from the dead. Continue to hold us and keep us with those who rest in Christ, with the promise that we will be gathered together around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our heavenly Father, hear these prayers, those that we've lifted up to you, those that are deep within our hearts, those that your Holy Spirit intercedes for us. May you continue to hear them as you have promised to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let us receive an offering for the care and concern the ministries of this congregation, for this community which we're part of, the world which we've been since. Yes.
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and we join your unending hymn.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And may God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his favor upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to invite somebody to come forward. Anybody who wants to play a music wants to come, please come forward. We're going to ask this last one needs a little beats and some music. And we got some, some tambourines up here. We got some drums and some maracas. So why don't you go ahead and grab one?